Hi folks, welcome to cleaning day. We have had this machine for about four years now. We've swapped the coolant out once before, but Ed from QualiChem volunteered to help us come clean out our sump and walk us through that whole process of what we're gonna do. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to swap out the coolant, clean up the machine and start fresh. And there's a couple different ways you can clean a machine. One, if you're in a high production facility, like an automotive facility that's 24-7 yeah. and just doesn't have downtime, mm -hmm. you can take the EquiClean SMP, put it in the coolant at 2% concentration yeah. for sump volume, and run for 24 to 48 hours, and machine like normal. Oh, just machine normal, okay. And it, it'll continue to clean the system as you machine. It'll clean out the lines, so you can do it that way. The other way you can do it is to take out the old coolant and then add water and cleaner, circulate it, and depending on how filthy the machine is, you might go 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. Cleaning time is gonna be determined by how filthy the machine is. Yeah. After you do that, you'll take that cleaner out. You'll put in rinse water, you'll put in about a half percent of coolant. Yeah. Coolant has RP, and our tables tend to want to rust, and our weight covers tend to want to rust with oh, just rust water on them. RP. Okay. So the rust preventative that's in, that's in the coolant with the rinse water, it's going to coat everything with a little bit of RP while we're rinsing. So if you mix, like we mix normally 7 or 8% coolant, if you mix less than 1%, it still has enough rust preventative? For the time that you're going to have the machine down during the rinse and yeah. recharge, yes. Okay. Same thing with an, with an oil-based coolant. You still want to, this is a synthetic coolant, an oil-based coolant. Put a little bit of coolant in that rinse water, gives you just enough time so when you pull that rinse water out, you put water and charge it, yep. you won't have flash rust. Cool. We don't right. want to scrub a table. Right. So we'll throw in the description, some of the tools that we're going to use, and we'll throw in a link to the maintenance schedule that goes beyond just coolant. But the trick is we work for the process. We pull our fixture plates off once a year to check that. And uh, our coolant has lasted a couple years, and, and that is not abnormal from what I've heard if you maintain your coolant, right? If your coolant is 95 to 90 percent water, the better the water, the better the coolant, coolant the right. longer it lasts. Because the enemy of any coolant is dissolved ions in the water. Chlorides, sulfates, nitrites, calcium, magnesium. Yep. Those things build up yep. and eventually you lose the ability to keep them suspended and then you start getting residues and deposits. Yep. In the case of an oil-based coolant, it can split. Okay. You will have oil on top, right. water on the bottom, and you're gonna be breaking tools. Yep. So I always recommend RO or DI water for any operation if you want longevity. Yeah. Card here to our uh, water video, we will go into more detail on that. The other thing I'm kind of nervous about is what kind of surprises are we going to find? First thing we noticed this morning is that the coolant we're taking out didn't look like it was supposed to and uh, ends up that we used some dicum recently which basically acted like food coloring. So what we thought may have been rust or sign of a bigger problem hopefully isn't a big issue. Uh, but what's, what's the first step? First step is we're going to go around to the back of the machine and we're going to start vacuuming out okay. the old coolant. Cool. Let's do it. We're using a chip trapper, just a giant vacuum. Uh, this is the 110 gallon drum size. They've got a 55 gallon drum size, but if you're a small shop, pick up one of these five gallon bucket things. That way you don't have to ruin your shop back. But what we're gonna do using a suction device to pull the coolant out is definitely the way, uh, the more efficient way to clean out your sump. Um, this particular unit runs it through a bag filter inside. So what's really nice is if you wanna just clean your coolant, you can pull it right out through this system, push it through the bag filter, turn the handle, and you can put that coolant right back in after it's been pushed through a relatively inexpensive bag filter at the, at the mesh size or micron size of your desire. With semi-synthetic coolants, you wanna make sure that mesh size doesn't typically go below to five microns or below. Okay, that's pretty Because good. you will strip out your defomer. Okay. Uh, synthetic coolants really don't have a problem usually with five micron bags but 10 micron bags should be plenty to take out all the chips and all the fines yep. that you want to get out. Another thing, Xair is the company out of Cincinnati that makes this unit. They also make a unit that just includes this, this cam lock fitting and a hose, and a standpipe that goes to the bottom of a normal 55 gallon drum. Any old 55 gallon drum of coolant becomes a receptacle for me to put old coolant or rinse water. So the beauty of it is you screw it down and now when you turn the air supply on, it will empty the drum or evacuate the old coolant or rinse water. And when you want to evacuate the coolant from the sump or the rinse water from the sump, you unscrew it to the top and it will suck out of the sump. So all the way down is empty the drum, all the way up is empty the sump. And boom, that coolant exits the 55 gallon drum and I can use the same drum over yeah, and over all day.
Typically, we want to make sure to get back here in the pump well, too, because you're going to get some fines back there. And then we'll pull this all the way out. Yeah, exactly. And we'll shop back out those chips on the bottom. The Haas people have been nice enough to make it easy to take these pumps out of the sump. Very simple system to clean compared to a lot of other machine tools. And if you look down here, you'll see there was still a great deal of fluid in the pump well itself. So we're going to want to vacuum that out as well. I got this. Saunders Machine Works has what they call a see-through skimmer, and that's the floating weir that sits in the coolant that skims the tramp wells off, and it moves it up to this unit right up here. It's actually a coalescing oil skimmer, so the coolant enters on the far left, comes down and under into the center area where the media is that pops the tramp oil out, and the clean coolant then returns over and back into the sump on the far right side. The only reason you want to take the time to clean out this coalescing oil separator is because if you've got a lot of oil and sludge and, and chips and film in here, this can be a source of bacteria and mold, and it can contaminate the coolant uh, if not cleaned out. So you're, if you're taking the time to clean the machine out, make sure to clean out anything that could hold mold or bacteria. So what we've done is we've put a jack stand under one end, so we drain all that fluid down there. So now we're just gonna get rid of the rest of the fluid. So next we'll get a shop vac and we'll shop back out all those chips that are laying in the bottom. In some cases, machines will have stacks of chips that you'll shovel out. This is a very clean machine, so we haven't got a lot of work to do. Okay. This screen here filters the chips out. We're just doing a little 5S cleanup on it, wiping it down. Uh, we'll put this back in. We run the cleaner to catch any chips that come from the machines so they don't go into the pumps but uh, we're just basically wiping this down so the cleaner has a chance to work on it as well. And if you look at our sump now, we've removed all the physical debris, and so when we put water and cleaner in here, we're gonna get the best cleaning we possibly can. Sure. Okay, what we're about to do is we're about to put the pumps back in the sump, the cover back on, hook up the hoses, and then we're going to slide it back under. Now we're going to let the cleaner touch all the surfaces. So we'll use the garden hose off the pump to spray down the inside walls of the machine. And then we'll come back and we'll remove all the cleaner and then go to rinse water. There we go. In this cleaner, you've got surfactants and detergency. You've got alkalinity. You've got a biocide in there to kill any bacteria or mold or fungus that it comes in contact with. It's got rust preventatives built into it, and it's also got, a, believe it or not, a little bit of a defoamer in it, so it's a controlled foam so that you can uh, minimize foaming on the floor when you're cleaning. So, uh, good product. You can use it with high pressure systems, low pressure systems, and it smells like oranges, so the guys don't really complain about the aroma. This is a good opportunity to clean your glass, spray down the walls, get your light, run the cleaner through the nooks and crannies of the table, any coolant residue off of there, weight covers and slides. Now we're going to begin removing the cleaner from the sump. Now we've pulled out the cleaner solution that was in there, vacuumed it out. In the process, we also emptied the drum because <laughs> it was full. And now we're going to put the pumps back in, put in some clean water with about a half percent of the uh, Q-Cool 355D and circulate it for 15 to 20 minutes. As a rinse, then we'll, we'll vacuum that out, and then we'll be ready to put fresh water and charge the machine up with fresh coolant at 10% concentration. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the pumps back up, plug those back in, hook up the oil skimmer, put the, the final front cover on it, and then start adding fresh water and then coolant, and charge the system with 10% uh, Q-Cool 355D, uh, medical and aerospace uh, fluid, uh, high lubricity, neutral pH, uh, safe for all metals.
Okay, what I've done now is I've gotten a sample of the fluid from the sump. We've charged it with fresh water and fresh coolant. So when we've got the pumps running and we're mixing coolant, uh, our goal is to run between eight and 10% by volume. So we're gonna check it on the refractometer. So I'm gonna come over here to my refractometer. Now, this is a digital refractometer. Earlier, I zeroed this refractometer to their RO water. So it's important that you zero your meter to the water you're actually using uh, with your metalworking fluid so your reading is accurate. So what I'm gonna do now is take a pipette sample, put it on the lens, then what I'll do is I'll close my lid and I will, I will read the coolant. And it's showing me 6.1. Every coolant has a multiplier. Our multiplier is 1.43. So we're gonna take that 6.1 and multiply it by 1.43 to get our actual uh, percentage. 6.1, times 1.43, we're somewhere probably around 8.75% 8, 8 concentration. Our goal is to charge today at 10 and allow it to come down and stay in this range in the middle. But we're gonna charge up at 10, so we're, our goal is to get to seven. So that's our goal. So we'll see how this mixes and check back later. It's had a chance to mix for about an hour and a half. So we're gonna check it based on our chart and see what we got. Seven point one, just a skosh over ten percent, like ten point one, ten point two percent. So this machine is fully charged, mixed, and ready to go. If you were keeping track, we had to dispose of the initial coolant, the initial cleaner, and then also the one percent mix that we used to rinse out the cleaner. We store that here in fifty-five gallon drums, and then we use a company called Safety Clean. They'll do what's called a vac service where they'll come and they'll just vacuum it right out of those barrels, which is actually nice because then we can keep those barrels. The cost for us on that is somewhere between one and two dollars a gallon to have that properly removed. It does take a little while to get set up with a company like Safety Clean. They have to come out, see your shop operation, do a test sample and so forth. Um, and we also have to allocate a space of our shop to store that because we like to batch it up and only call them once or twice a year. But if there's one takeaway, it's another good reminder. Take care of your coolant. It's an incredibly important part of your machine tools and manufacturing workflow. It really stinks if you, if you ruin it or let it go bad. It's expensive, it's disruptive, it's not particularly fun to swap it out. There are some materials that are gonna play havoc on it like cast iron, sometimes machining a lot of copper. So talk to your coolant rep to see what options there may be around that. Uh, otherwise, I wanna thank Qualichem for helping us produce this content around coolant and manufacturing. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care, see you soon.